Friday night took care of my weekday blues. I woke up at breakfast and read the news. I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do. Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start. Oh, yeah. It's a Saturday show. 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 Hey, fellas. Oh, hey, Toby. What are you guys doing? We were just working out a little math problem. Yeah, this one's a doozy. What kind of uh, math problem are you guys working on? Well, I was thinking about how hard everyone's been working on the show, and I thought we could do something nice for everyone. What does that have to do with math? Well, as you know, Toby, I've been contracted by Otto to be his personal chef. Yeah? And I've really been trying to expand my repertoire. Big Fred has been trying a bunch of new recipes. Some I've liked and some I haven't. I'm getting pretty experimental these days, Toby. You certainly are, Fred. Otto, you told me that Fred is doing a great job as your personal chef, but what does all this have to do with math? Well, Toby, one of Fred's newest dishes is something I've never seen before. It's hot and cheesy and chewy and crunchy and, and... Yup, I found a recipe in the back of an old cookbook. I was hesitant at first since it had a funny name, but it turns out Otto and I love it. What, what is it? Pizza! Pizza? You guys have never heard of pizza? Nope, but now it's my absolute favorite thing to eat. I wonder what it is with turtles and pizza. Well, that's great that Fred, you found something new to cook, and Otto, you found something that you just love to eat, but I'm still not understanding what all this has to do with math. Well, Toby, we decided we wanted to thank everyone for their hard work by making them pizza! Yep, and now we're doing some math to figure out how many pizzas I've got to make. Let's see, we've got um, Toby and DJ Mars and Lauren and Hazel and Christopher and Kashi and Lucy and Amanda and um... That's a lot of pizzas! Yep. If everyone gets a pizza, then Fred, you need to make 18 pizzas. Wait, you guys are making everyone a whole pizza? Isn't that the recommended serving size, Toby? I eat a pizza, one pizza. Isn't that how you do it? You guys don't cut your pizza into slices before you eat it? Nope, I just fold it in half and eat it like a sandwich. Well, Otto, while I admire your gusto, traditionally, pizza's cut up into slices so that it's easier to share. Okay... Yeah, so if we found out how many slices of pizza each person would eat, we could do some math and then we'd figure out how many pizzas Fred's gotta make. How would we do that, Toby? We want to keep our pizza delivery a surprise. Well, we could send everyone an email and ask them how many slices of pizza they usually eat. We can tell them it's for a new segment on the show. That way we can keep it a surprise. That's a great idea, Otto. All right, I'll get started writing this email. Otto, you finish up the list. And Fred, why don't you introduce Kashi and Christopher? Can't do, big guy. Up next, Akashi and Christopher with the word of the day. Hey, Akashi, isn't it a beautiful day today? It is a beautiful day. You know, I thought we could go see our friends from the library. Oh, that would be great. 
And you know, we're talking all about numbers today, so I thought we could figure out the shortest route. Okay. And I made this little map for us so we can figure out which way to take. Oh, I see. So it's four minutes to go to that corner, and then three more minutes to go up that way. Four plus three makes seven minutes. That's right. Or, Kashi, we can take a shortcut and go along the diagonal from here to there. Oh. And, you know, Lexi was kind enough to print something out for us. Look at this. Do you know what that says, Kashi? Oh, that says hypotenuse. That's right. It is the hypotenuse, which is the long side of a right triangle. I know. It means the shortest distance between two points, and it's a straight line. <laughs> That's right. So, Kashi, what do you say we take this route to get to our friend's place? Well, you know, the hypotenuse might be the shortest way to go, but the funnest way to go <laughs> would be a curvy line between two points. Okay, let's go, Kashi. Okay. Hey, Kashi, we're on a trail. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> Good thing I brought your goggles. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna climb some stairs. Woo! Are you getting your exercise in? Great, over the bridge, here we go. Now we're gonna go into, you know it's Lauren and Hazel's favorite, into the tunnel. And, wow, this tunnel, this tunnel is long. Finally, Finally, let's go down the slide at the playground. Woo! That's awesome. Hey, Kashi, we made it. What is it? It's small. You can hold it in your hands. It has rows of beads that you can push around. So, what is it? Dang! I heard that monsters aren't any good with numbers. Not unless you count Dracula. Boy, Toby, that was a great idea. Everyone responded to our pizza survey. They sure did, Otto. But do you know what we've got to do now? Pizza math? Yep, pizza math. Okay, let's take a second to map this out. We're delivering pizzas to everyone's house to thank them all for the job they do to bring the Saturday show to you. We have our data and our equation, so now it's time to start calculating. First things first, how many slices to make? We do the math while Fred sets the oven to bake. Kashi wants one, Christopher wants two, both Amanda and Katie want two slices too. Lauren wants three, Hazel just wants a half. Count them all up, we're doing pizza math. Yeah, pizza math, pizza math. Shark wants four, Brian wants one to start, and then two more. Allison and Squeak want two pieces of these two total for Teddy and Lucy to eat. Then it's up to us, I know how many for you. I'll eat three and a half, and I'll eat two. We'll make one more pie for the rest of the crew. Add them all up, and how did we do? We're doing pizza math, yeah, pizza math. Count them all up, we're doing pizza math, yeah, pizza math. Suffices all together, we need to make 40 slices. 40 slices 
equals how many pies? Well, that all depends on the size of the pies. Let's head to the kitchen where Fred's in charge. What's the size of the pies, Fred? Uh, large. Large it is, Fred. That sounds great. Each pie we make can be cut into eight. Now we got a lot of numbers, but the answer is missing. Tell me what? We, we gotta, gotta do, do some division. How many times does eight, which equals one pizza, go into 40? The slices we need to make our pizza party so incredibly great. I know. Let's count to 40 by 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. That's five pizza pies. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. That's five pizza pies. Pizza math. We're doing pizza math. Count them all up. We're doing pizza math. Yeah, pizza math. Pizza math. Count them all up. We're doing pizza math. Yeah, pizza math. Yeah, pizza math. Count them all up. We're doing pizza math. Yeah, pizza math. What did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. Number, number magic. magic. Think of a number, any number. Multiply it by two. Add 10 to your total. Now divide your total by 2. Finally, subtract the original number from the total. Your answer is... 5! Look! 5! Five is a good number. It is a good number. Yeah, I like the number five so much, I could write a poem about it. Oh, that would be cool. But hey, let's let's learn about other numbers. Hey, here's a cool fact. The Lego factory produces 36,000 pieces of Lego every minute. Wow. That's a lot of Legos. Let's let's find a smaller number. Okay, here's 42. Did you know there are 42 holes on a Connect 4 game? I love that game. Me too. Maybe maybe we can play it when we are done. Uh-oh. Katie, number 13. People say it's an unlucky number. And the fear of the number 13 is called Triska Decaphobia. Triska what? Triska Decaphobia. That's what it says. Wow, I never heard of that. Here, here's a good number. Four. Hey, the number four is the only number spelled the same letters as the same as itself. Here, look. Four. F-O-U-R. One, two, three, four letters. The same. Neat. Wow. 
numbers are so amazing and they are all around us. Oh, I'm so glad we learned about some of them. I'm kind of hungry. George, want to go get a snack and play some Connect Four? Oh, I would love to. Let's go. Got a geometry joke for you. Okay. Why doesn't anybody talk to circles? Why not? Because there's no point. We're talking all about numbers today, and I'd like to tell you about the Fibonacci sequence, named after the mathematician. The Fibonacci sequence is a list of numbers, and if you add the last two numbers on the list, you'll get the following number. But let's start at the beginning. If you begin with 0 and 1 and add them together, you get 1, of course. Now the last two numbers are 1 and 1. When you add them together, you get 2. Now the last two numbers are 1 and 2. Adding them together gives you 3. And finally you'll get 5 and 8 and 13 and 21, etc, etc. Some people even celebrate their Fibba birthday when they turn the age of a number in the Fibonacci sequence. These numbers show up in myriad places in nature. Pine cones, arrangements of petals, branches, even the shape of a spiral galaxy. I was just contemplating this pineapple at lunchtime, and I noticed that the spirals very much resemble the numbers in a Fibonacci sequence. Here I've painted three spirals on the outside of a pineapple. White, red, and yellow. If we count the spirals running parallel to the white line, we'll see there are eight rings. Counting the spirals parallel to the red line, we'll see 13. And finally, the spirals parallel to yellow, 21. Aha! Fibonacci! Now there's another way to visualize the Fibonacci sequence with the Fibonacci spiral. If we begin with a square with dimensions of one by one, and then the following square, another one by one square, corresponding to the Fibonacci sequence, and build out from there, Square by square, ever increasing in value, we'll see a beautiful resemblance to the creature called the Nautilus. Last, my friends Kashi and Christopher neglected to give you a summer game code, and I'm here to rectify that. This is a word with five letters. It means a number but also it means a finger or toe. And if you cut this word in the middle, it means a saying from the 60s. And that's all from the professor today. So long. Hey, it's a shark. I'm here to teach you about the never-ending number of pi. Are you ready? Okay, sing along. Go! 3.141592653589793 Three, Eight, 
zero eight five one three two uh, three out uh, six the numbers the numbers five five anymore. Oh, I wish there was a way I could eat it and share it and still have it. You know, I do know a really cool math trick where you can use measurements and geometry and make it look like your chocolate bar is never going away. It's an infinite chocolate bar. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to show you. Okay, so here is my chocolate bar and it has five squares going up, one, two, three, four, five, and three across the top. I am going to cut my chocolate bar up and see if I can move these squares around, but still keep my chocolate bar whole. How am I going to do this? So I've made some cuts in my chocolate bar. It was a little hard to do it neatly. It kind of crumbled. But I think if I slide this piece over here and slide this bit down, there's a little tiny triangle that fell off the bottom. We're gonna, gonna keep it there so I don't lose any of my precious chocolate. Okay, now let me start building this chocolate bar again. But remember, I wanna keep one square for myself so that I can eat it. So I'll slide this in here and let's see, kind of clean up these crumbs a little bit. As I said, cutting this chocolate up was kind of a messy process. I think these pieces go in there, but let me move these squares first. Okay, so I put a square here. See, I have a chocolate bar with one, two, three, four, five squares going up and three across and a little bit to fill in there. But I still have, I still have over here an extra square of chocolate to eat. So I can eat my chocolate, but I still have the whole chocolate bar. What is going on here? Let's put it back together and see if we can figure this out. So let's slide everything back where it was and take a look and see if you can notice something different. It doesn't look like the number of squares are changing, but maybe the size of the squares is changing when I make those cuts in the chocolate bar. Can you see that it's a little bit taller now? What's happening is that I am moving things around and it still looks like it's the same chocolate bar, but some of the rectangles in the middle are actually smaller. And this is all due to a kind of math called geometry. Geometry is a branch of mathematics where you study sizes and shapes and positions and angles and dimensions of things. And this 
magic chocolate bar trick is a good way to show you how geometry works just by changing angles, shapes, and positions. What is it? It's an abacus, a counting tool used for performing calculations. It was used in ancient times all over the world. There are many different versions. This type of abacus is called a swan pen from China. Before calculators, people used abacuses to do multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction at high speeds. Abacus. How do you say? Como se dice? Numeros. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Cinco. Righteous free pizza. Thanks, Toby and Otto. everybody. Thanks to Otto and Toby's heroic delivery services, in front of you is some of the finest pizza that I believe I've ever made. Please enjoy yourselves. Yeah, we're so happy and so pleased with everybody working so hard on the Saturday show. You guys deserve this reward. It's a pizza party. Yay! Yay! Pizza. I love pizza. <laughs> Thanks, you. Thank you guys so much. Well, that's our show for today, folks. Thanks so much for joining us on our numerical journey. If you'd like more resources, you can go to aadl.org slash the Saturday show. And if you'd like to drop us a line, you can send an email to tss at aadl.org. And until next time, Keep working hard. Bye.